My name is Natasha and I'm joining you from my home, which is located in Tree Six Territory and the homeland of the Métis. I'm joining you today for our second Sustainable YXE video. Last time we talked about our changing climate and we went over uh, a snapshot of climate change and some severe weather events that we saw in 2020. We also talked about how globally we're not doing so great at meeting our targets of keeping global warming um, below 1.5 degrees Celsius and how even this target, even if we meet it, isn't that great. Despite that, I am going to talk to you about um, the changes and that we can have as individuals. It's really important to come together collectively and to have policy changes and make large scale changes at the government level. But it's also really important to take action as individuals and this does have an impact. There are billions of people on the planet. If we change how we live and act, uh, we will make a difference. So there's a lot we can talk about when it comes to sustainable living. And we certainly could spend hours and hours talking about any one of these things, but we don't have that long today. So what I'm going to do is briefly touch on a few key areas where people can make changes. And I'll talk mostly about um, what it means to live sustainably in Saskatchewan. So I'll give you some context on how we're doing in SK and talk about some resources that we here, have here as well. So as far as context goes, again, not a super happy note to start on, but Saskatchewan is actually the highest emitter of greenhouse gases per capita in Canada. Um, and as of 2017, we were 246% higher uh, as compared to the national average for emissions per capita. So we are not doing great on, Sask on emissions. We haven't been doing great on emissions. And even though these are largely due to our industries, oil, gas, and farming, there are a lot of resources here anyway. So don't think you can't do anything because we live in Saskatchewan and things aren't great. Instead, recognize that we have a lot of resources and there's a lot of things that we can do. We have bulk stores, we have local groups, um, formal ones and grassroots ones that do allow us to live sustainably here in Saskatchewan. So the first thing I want to talk about is sustainability definitions. And there's lots of different ones, but they all boil down to the same thing. You want to have a balance in doing things in an environmentally friendly way um, that is also socially responsible. So what I want you to do instead of, well, you could, I guess, go through some of the technical ones. But what I want you to do today is make your own personal definition and make it your mantra. So use this either to fuel your own climate action plan as a family or individual, or just as um, a back of your mind thing to think about when you're out making purchasing decisions. So your mantra could be um, to buy secondhand, um, or it could be uh, to make sure that you're reducing on packaging, and it could involve different things like ethics standards for the way things are manufactured and the way workers are treated when they're manufactured. Uh, if you are going to, to undertake a climate change action plan, which I highly recommend you do, it's a great thing to do as a family. The first place to start is, it was really important and really great, is actually just talking about what you know or think um, about climate change and sustainability. It's really great to hear um, some of the things that kids are thinking about it or teens or adults and get their perspective perspective on it and discuss it. And if there's something that you don't agree with or don't understand to acknowledge that and to then research it further together and explore. So you get a kind of foundational understanding um, of climate change and sustainability that can inform your family mantra. And then you can also learn more about the local services that are available to you. So that could be learning about your recycling program, how it works, your compost program, if you have one. Uh, we do have green bins here in Saskatoon that accept household compost as well. So you can throw in your, your kitchen scraps, as long as they're not meat and things like that, into the green bin, which is really lucky. Um, and it's really good to discuss that with all of the members of your household. So I recommend you guys talk about what you know, you make a mantra together, and then you can start with a waste audit, which is really helpful. So you can do this casually, which is what we do. We just peek into your garbage and recycling bins periodically whenever you're putting something in or um, 
maybe once a week, something like that. And you just kind of take stock and make a mental note of what you're seeing a lot of. And then that can give you a good clue of where you need to cut back on either purchasing. So maybe buy less of that item that you're seeing in your trash can a lot, or maybe switch how you're buying it. Maybe switch to bulk. If you're seeing a lot of cereal boxes and you're recycling, maybe you can then start buying that at a bulk store to cut down on that packaging. Um, a really foundational thing that people should understand when they're talking about sustainable living is the three R's. This is really classic, I guess. Everybody knows about it. Kids are taught about it in school. But what people forget often is that it's a hierarchy. So the three R's are reduce, reuse, recycle. And you want to start at reduce. You don't want to start at recycle. Some people put a lot of emphasis on recycling. But if you have a lot of stuff in your recycling bin, that's not necessarily a good thing. You might not be following the guidelines properly. It might not actually be getting recycled. Or that might just mean that you're buying things that have a lot of excess packaging um, and that's something you can change to be more sustainable. So that's another good waste audit thing to look at is your recycling bin. So first take stock of what you have and try to reduce it. Try to cut back to the things that you truly need and enjoy in your lives. This is a big part of the min minimalist movement um, and the zero waste movement. So cut back on what you have, pare down, and make sure that the things that you do have um, are useful and bring you joy. And then um, from there, you can go to reuse. So if you um, are about to recycle a jar, see if you can reuse it in your home instead. Or instead of purchasing something new, see if you can get it secondhand at a thrift store or upcycle and reuse something in a different way. The last stage of the 3R life lifestyle is to recycle. And when it comes to recycling, we are very lucky in Saskatchewan. We have a lot of really good resources for various items. And I'll point you to this website. I'll add the link in with the video. It's called Saskatchewan Waste Reduction Council. And they actually have a section on the three R's lifestyle as well, which is really handy. They have good tips on how to live more sustainably, zero waste, low waste. Um, but then they also have under recycling a series of icons that um, state various categories of recycling. So there's agricultural plastics, batteries, paint, carpet, food waste, glass, um, e-waste, which is like electronics, drywall, et cetera, et cetera. So a whole bunch of those um, really specific or oddball categories. And then if you click on them, they expand and tell you where in Saskatchewan you can handle those products at the end of their use. So that might be a secondhand store um, that takes donations, or it might be a recycling facility in Saskatchewan that accepts those. So that's really great. Um, it shows that these things don't need to end up in the landfill, which is really good because things in the landfill don't break down. This is why food waste is such an issue because when you put food waste in your trash can and it ends up in the landfill, there's no oxygen in the landfill. So these food items remain largely whole and intact intact, and they actually end up off-gassing really harmful um, greenhouse gases. So this makes the problem worse. So if you have a compost, they get oxygen and nutrients and they break down into soil, which is really good. So that's a really simple step we can take. And composting is really simple. There's lots of different ways you can do it. There's a few resources on the Saskatchewan Waste Reduction Council website, as well as the City of Saskatoon website. Both organizations offer um, composting coaches, which will people will come to your house and teach you how to compost, which is really handy. And the City of Saskatoon also has a quiz you can do that tells you um, or suggest a few different composting styles that might be better suited for your household because there's a bunch of different types and they're almost all very simple. So that's another good thing to look at. So if you do your um, climate change action plan and you see that you're having a large amounts of waste either in your landfill, your garbage, or your recycling, just take stock of that, um, try to cut back, reduce, see if there's anything you can reuse or upcycle, and then find out the proper way to recycle it using one of those resources. So that's a really good um, Saskatchewan focused thing to look at. There's also another website called EcoHub Canada. This is more kind of um, blog style, but it's well researched. And the reason why I'm suggesting this one in particular is because it has a list per province of um, places you can purchase zero waste, low waste, or sustainable products, and they have one for Saskatchewan. So here is a good place to look if you want to find out um, where to buy in bulk, where to buy um, zero waste items, uh, and where we might have thrift stores for secondhand. So that's a really good place to check out as well, and I'll put the link to that. If you're wanting to do some reading, of course, we're going to talk about that, we're the library. Uh, I have some good resources for you. If you're really interested in the food waste issue that I've talked about, there's books like this. This is a cookbook which talks about food as the solution. So it has um, an opening section that talks about 
the issues with the food production system and we have a lot of waste in production but we also have a lot of waste on the household end which is where individuals can feel empowered to make a difference because on average Canadian households waste over a thousand dollars worth of food every year so we buy it we just don't use it and some of that has to do with misinterpreting use by dates which are more quality standards not edibility standards um, and uh, just things you forget about and or storage issues because there's lots of different ways to store food that makes it last longer. Another aspect that this book touches on that makes it really great is um, how resource intensive food production is and how having a mix of um, vegetarian options and meat options can help reduce your personal carbon footprint. So this is a good resource to check. Food is the Solution by Matthew Prescott. There's a lot of other ones uh, like that. If you're wanting to green your home, we have things like green housekeeping. This one is by Christina Strutt. There's also different zero waste specific books. This one touches on that a bit and also has some recipes for cleaning products that you can make at home. Um, and if you're looking for something that goes more through all of the aspects of your, of your, of your house and your life all in one place, uh, I would like to recommend this book. And I'll let you read the title yourself. And it is by Ashley Piper. This book I think is good because it has all of those things in one place. It talks about food waste, it talks about clean, uh, greening your closet, uh, ethical fashion, uh, the ethics of how things are made and produced and how they get to you, resources, climate change, greenhouse you know, gases. There's even a section on dating, which is more adult, and there's of course some adult language and content in this book, so be aware of that. Um, but mostly I like it because it's well researched and throughout the book there's highlighted sections um, that give you recaps, fast steps, or long-term steps you can take. Uh, and whenever they mention a fact or figure, there's a reference right in the text as you go through, like, through the page. Uh, and then at the end there's a very detailed reference list that you can go dig, into deep, dig in deeper, so that's really useful. And it's very conversational and kind of funny, so that's worth a read too. And the other thing I'm going to point out is the library now has a scroller on their main page. So if you go on the Saskatoon Public Library website, at the bottom you'll see a list. There's a list on the side and then some thumbnail pictures per category. So it'll be like popular fiction, popular nonfiction, um, teen reads, things like that. Now there's one called environmentalism. And if you click on that, you'll see a list of children's books, teen books, and adult books on the topic of sustainability. So there's lots of resources to check out through the library and lots of different little organizations and resources for you to use across Saskatchewan and in Saskatoon to green your lifestyle and live sustainably. So give yourself room to make mistakes, make small changes where you can, and mostly just be mindful and intentional with what you bring into your life and your home, and you'll be well on your way to living more sustainably. So thank you very much for joining me. Have a great day and hopefully uh, see you at the next video. Bye.